One of the ways that you can install EL Donation Tracker on Linux would be to clone the Git repository. So I'm going to show you how to do that here. So first, uh, you go to the website. Um, now you may have started out um, on this site, um, and then you can he click here to view on GitHub. And so you would go clone or download, and then uh, here where it says clone with HTTPS, and click on here to copy it to your um, clipboard. And then let's come back over to our um, shell. All right, you do git clone, paste that in, or you could have hit shift insert. It'll copy it to your computer. It's not that big, two, two, almost two and a half megs, no big deal. So change into that directory. All right, so now the first thing you need to do uh, in here is create a virtual environment um, so that you don't mess with any of your um, pip packages that are on your system. So um, we'll do that right now. What you do is do you Python. Now, if you have an older system, you might need to do Python 3 on Fedora 31. Python is Python 3. So Python mvnv dot. All right, it's going to create a virtual environment. All right, and now what you need to do is um, pip install. Um, oops, hold on one second here. Sorry, I was uh, doing the wrong syntax there for a second. It's uh, pip install r and then uh, requirements.txt. Oops, sorry. And that'll grab all the requirements needed here. Um, you'd, you, you'd use this version versus PyPy if you're going to um, do some uh, development or if you're going to, um, uh, you just for some reason don't want to use PyPy. So normally you'd use PyPy, but so you've got this. So now you've got all the dependencies there. So now you just change directories into EL Donation Tracker. And here you'll find GUI.py. So just hit Python, GUI.py. There you go. There's your GUI. And uh, you'll you'll see here in your command line window, there's a bunch of settings telling you where it's looking for persistent settings. Um, it's giving you a whole bunch of messages about what's going on. And um, right now I'm going to cut to uh, Windows because the GUI functionality is exactly the same on Linux and Windows, and so I just decided to record that once. And so um, that'll show you how to use the GUI. And then after that, it'll uh, show you how to use it within OBS. So there we go. All right, this portion of the instructions are going to be the same whether you're running Windows or Linux. You may be wondering what just happened. Weren't we just in Windows? Well, for version 4.3, the only thing that has changed for the user is here in the settings. And so rather than record the entire thing all over again, I decided to just um, go over the settings here and insert that into uh, the other videos because everything else stays exactly the same. So um, once you've loaded up the settings, um, I've added a few new buttons, but we'll go through everything from scratch. So. Uh, what you want to do first is enter your participant ID and I'll show you exactly where you get that from. If you sign into your Extra Life site, you'll see at the end of the URL, it says participant ID equals and a number 401280. And if you look here, that's exactly what I have, 401280. So you just copy that number over. And one of the new features I've added in 4.3 is the ability to validate your participant ID in case you typed it incorrectly and you want to check. So you just click there and it was able to get to the API point uh, where we're going to grab all the data for you. So that means it's a valid ID. It's entirely possible you could have mistyped someone else's ID. <laughs> so if the numbers look weird, check that. But uh, at least it's a valid ID, right? It's not going to the program's going to work. So I like to keep all my um, my text files that the program produces in my Dropbox folder. That way, 
if I'm running it on uh, Linux to try and test something, I can uh, do that and still play in um, Windows and still have all the text updating. Um, currency symbol, you're pr oh, so if you want to select something different, right, you click that button. Uh, the currency symbol is a dollar sign. You can change that to whatever you want. That'll appear anywhere that the donations appear. Then your team ID, you get similar to the way that you get your um, extra life ID. So here's my team. I'm in Giant Bomb. I'm not the leader of the team. Um, I'm in that team. And here it says team ID equals 50394. If you go here, 50394. And you can also validate it once again. And um, this data uh, is filled in because I've already got data. I've run this program before. For you, this will all be blank. Um, but you can see here's the team captain of the team I'm on the goal and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, if you look over here, um, there's a lot of data that I show you here. Some of it's warnings and some of it is just for your information. And if you open this program on Windows, you'll see a little command line window that comes along when you open it up. If you're on Linux, you'll either be running this through PyPy or Git clone. And so you'll already be um, in a command line window so you can just look here for various information that it's telling you and if anything looks weird that's kind of your first indication and if anything goes wrong this gives you the data you need to file a bug report so that I can try and fix it um, and in the future I plan to use a uh, new Python module that'll kind of allow me to make it red if it's in if it's a uh, bug and green if it's just information and so on and so forth um, All right, so, uh, right, so you can validate that as well, and that lets you know that that team exists. So donors to display, um, you'll see this later when I load up either um, OBS or XSplit, depending on which video you're watching, and you'll see that this controls how many donors show up. At the moment, I've only got two donors, so setting this to five is kind of like just saying five is my upper bound, but it doesn't do anything weird. Um, if I set that to one, then it would only show Sean because he was the last person to donate. If you have a lot of donors that donate um, when you're live, you might want to make this a higher amount because you'll be able to use this to scroll across the screen. Um, another uh, set of features here, there's a tracker image and a donation sound. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. Um, but uh, the new thing that I've got here is if you need to grab the defaults, so you can just grab from GitHub and it'll grab it, it'll put it here, it'll do put it in the equivalent place in uh, Windows, and then it'll change this here to link to it. I, I was testing it before, that's why it already has that uh, location. You can also pick any image you want. Uh, what, you, what you want is an image file like a, um, oh, I've cleared it. So you do actually want to not hit cancel, but pick an image. Uh, I'll just do this again. There we go. Um, so you want an image that has a transparent background. And now I'll jump back over to Windows so you can see what that means. This image of me here is an example of a transparent background image. So um, if I were to take this image, I would appear solid and anything I put this on top of um, would just appear right behind me. For example, I use this when I'm making um, YouTube video um, uh, thumbnails. And so uh, if I turn this on right here, you can see there's the background right behind me. See, so you want an image that's like that. Okay, and same thing with the sound, you can grab the sound from GitHub and I'll show you what this does in just a minute. Um, and that's going to go along with these buttons here. So before I get to that, I just want to say whenever you change anything, what you want to do is hit persist settings, especially if you're on Linux. Um, if you hit save, it's most likely not going to work for you. If you're doing it through pip, it'll probably work for you if you're doing it within the Git clone. Uh, and if you're on Windows, you definitely want to persist settings because what that allows is that every time there's a new um, release, um, Every time there's a new release, it will allow you 
to carry over your settings. You don't have to redo the settings every time because as soon as you start up, it's gonna look for persistent settings. Uh, if you do persist settings, it's gonna save it in a special location. Uh, and on Linux, that's in your .config under your home directory in Windows. There's a similar place. It's basically your roaming profile and it'll go in there. All right, so now let's talk about what all this here is for. Uh, so this is for your tracker. Um, what you wanna use this for is in OBS or XSplit, you'll put this as a source right above the video game you're playing, or let's say you're recording yourself cooking or whatever. This will be the topmost video. You'll tell OBS or Chroma Key, I mean, oops, sorry, OBS or XSplit to Chroma Key, and therefore it'll erase the green background and all you'll see is the image that you selected, which is why you want it to have a transparent background. So I'll show you what the defaults look like. You got a donation. So there you go. Um, you see it's white text, it's that image, and then you heard the default sound. Let me do that one more time. You got a donation. Okay, uh, so it could be any MP3 you want as long as it's about 15 seconds long. Um, you probably want either, you can use my daughter's voice there saying you got a donation or you can use like Mario coin sound or something that kind of gets the attention of yourself and the people watching the stream to, to look and see who donated. Uh, so new features that I've got here are the ability to change the tracker font and color and background. Uh, maybe green doesn't work for you. Maybe the image that you selected has a lot of green. And so if you've ever seen people do green screen, when you wear green, you're invisible. So you don't, you can't do that. So what you want to do is come here, pick a color. Let's say blue. Now the background's blue. That looks like uh, a blue screen blue. And so it should be pretty easy for OBS or XSplit to make that disappear. Now you got a like donation. This. Um, and so one important thing for both the font and the background, if you were to hit cancel, now it becomes black. And the way you fix that is over here, you move this back up to white, pick whatever color you want. And now that's your new color. Uh, when you're done, don't forget to hit persist settings so that it saves this color. Um, and same thing with the font. You can pick any font you want. Um, size 52 is a pretty good font size, but you can pick any size you want. Uh, more than that, it's probably going to go off screen. So you kind of want 52 or less, but not too small or you won't be able to read it. But yeah, any font that you want. And then uh, for the color, it's um, any color you want. Uh, let's say I pick this weird green color. So now it's you got a like donation. That. So those are your settings. Again, hit persist settings when you're done and it'll save those for you. And that'll be what you'll use from now on. Again, I recommend uh, having this either be um, chroma key green or blue screen blue if you want to make it really easy for OBS or XSplit to automatically get rid of that background and then um, just have the image and the um, and the text show up. So that just about covers everything that is brand new in the settings. So we'll go back to past me, who's uh, most likely on Windows, and we'll show you what to do next. Okay, so here's OBS and here's how you can use the files, the text files that are created by the program. So what you want to do, um, so I've got this um, preview program set up to not have this infinite thing here. I figured that out uh, last time I made the instructions for this. So all you do is you come here under sources and let's pretend that this yellow screen represents a game, right? So uh, color source, instead of being a yellow color source would be a game source, right? So you're playing a game there. Um, and so you want to show something on top of on top of this, right? So actually, first of all, for the tracker, um, this is a, a window capture. So you go start um, doo -doo 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 -doo. window capture. I'll actually, make a new one. Tracker new, just to show you. Tracker new. So you go here. You go to tracker, and you'll see there's the tracker. All right, so I'm not gonna make this green screen yet. Let me just show you. I'm gonna pull the program off the screen just so I can hit the test alert button. Remember that button that I showed you here that will, that'll trigger it? Actually, I'll push it here. It should show you. You got a donation. There you go. Oh yeah, and there's the other one I have set up, right? That I have already green screened and it goes away, right? So what you'll do is you'll, um, on here, you'll click on filters. You'll add a filter, um, chroma key. It's automatically gonna assume green. 
now it's gone. And so now every time that someone makes a donation while the program is running, and it's a new donation while it's running, then you just hit test you alert, got a donation. and there you go. Um, one important thing for you to do after you've got this all set up and and and, and all that, the next time you want to run this because you're going to record a streaming session or you're going to record a, a video on demand, is you want to start um, Extra Life Donation Tracker. Hit the tracker button to make the window pop up. Um, that's uh, this window here, and then start OBS. If you don't, it'll it'll try and make this window tracker instead of the other one. I don't know why that happens, but that used to also happen with the other program I used to use before I developed mine. It's just some quirk of the way these programs work. Um, so there, there's that, that's really neat. But what else can you do, right? So you can click here and you do a text on um, GDI plus. And um, so I've got top team donors already. Actually, I'll show you what that looks like. So those are the top people, the top five donors to the team. Um, and so um, again, I'm not sure if I've triggered it yet for the teams, but for anything that has to do with the participant, that's where you're under your settings window where you have donors to display. That's that governs how many show up here. Um, so for me, uh, I've only got two donations, so that's the most you'll ever see as I add my stuff here. So you can add, sorry, add one of these and let's do um, uh, rec uh, last donor, right? So then you do read from file and you click on browse and then last donation, name amount. It was Sean. We hit OK. Do, 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 do. It's tiny. Um, that's probably not, you probably don't want to grow it like that. You, you probably want to do is go here. Um, and then under font, make it a big font, like 48 or something. Uh, right, and then let's say you're actually looking at the screen, but look like that. That's still kind of a bit small. Um, let's see if we can go a little bigger. Uh, 48 is the biggest, oh no, I think you can type whatever the heck you want here. So I'm gonna type 144. There we go. So there's that may or may not look great on yellow, but you can always change the color, right? So go back here, um, select font. Oh no, not font, sorry. Over here, select color. You can pick whatever color you think is gonna work well against yellow. So here we've got a little hot dog thing going on, red on yellow. That's what that would look like. Again, assuming yellow is the game that you're capturing. Um, what else might you wanna do? Well, this works a little bit better when you have a lot of um, people, but let's say scrolling. Uh, so I've only got two donors, so it won't be as cool as if I had like 10, but you know, it's, it's only March. Um, so if we go to last N donations, name amounts horizontal, that means they're going to be like this. Whereas if you don't do horizontal, if you do, um, the one right, let's see, last name, donor, right? this one, it's, it goes this way. Uh, and then message is whether or not they left a message. We both didn't, so that's why it says none. Uh, there we go. This is the one that's like this without a message. But let's say you do horizontal. All right, so now you've got, and let's actually, let's make it really big uh, since I don't have a lot of donors. So that'll force it to actually give you a scrolling effect. Let's go even bigger. I like 144. All right, so here's, um, the thing and you're like, hey, it's cut off. What the heck? So right click on it filters Scroll And you want to do a horizontal scroll You can pick a crazy fast speed you can go backwards for some reason you probably don't want to go backwards um, And so that'll go like that's really fast. <laughs> you probably don't want to go that fast um, Let's bring that to a more reasonable pace like you might see on the news so that would look like that. And so if you had a lot of donors, you kind of see them scrolling by. Like I said, you can set that to any number, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, and if they had messages, because um, um, you are able to leave messages on the Extra Life page, they'd be able to show the message. Again, if you wanted to do the message version, that would be um, the one that says message on it. <clears throat> if they don't leave a message, I just have it as none. 
so there you go um so yeah and just really quickly I'll go to the last donor here um not select font i meant to click on browse these are all the things you could show you could show the team captain the team goal you can show the number of participants um how much you've raised so far right so 50 bucks we have raised 50 bucks and so you could have total raised you can have your goal and show the numbers going up on game day or whatever day you happen to have lots of people um donating to you um again this is what it would look like imagine a game behind the yellow and that's essentially how you use the program so um, just to recap, you start it up, um, set your settings. Uh, if you click on persist, persist settings, you should never have to set it up again, even as I continue to release up, updates and upgrades to the program. Um, and then uh, once all your settings are good and you've tested it with the tracker and everything looks good, you just hit run. If there's no errors on the command line screen, um, that would be this screen, which has been going for a little bit now. If there are no errors on there, then you are good to go. And uh, when you're done, you hit stop. And then next time you wanna play again, you just start it up, start the tracker, start OBS, hit run and go. And everything's great. And, you, and you'll and you be able to have thing, these things change as people donate. So I hope that's uh, useful. And if you have any bugs, feel free to go to the GitHub page and uh, open up an issue. I've already um, solved quite a few in 2019 for other people. So. Uh, happy uh, streaming. Remember, it's for the kids.